And we are back on Capitol tonight. Over the past two months, we have been reminded of just how unpredictable Mother Nature can be. New York State has seen earthquakes, tropical storms, and tornadoes, all of which left behind varying levels of damage. In fact, the flooding damage was so severe that in parts of the southern tier, primary day voting locations had to be moved. But voting did in fact continue, unlike 10 years ago, when the 9-11 terrorist attacks interrupted voting altogether and led to the primaries being pushed back. Now election attorney Jerry Goldfeder is calling for the state to come up with a contingency plan in case a disaster interrupts election day. He's joining me from New York City to explain. Jerry, it's good to see you. Good to see you again. I can't believe that the state doesn't have one of these. Why doesn't it? What is it going to take for New York to learn its lesson? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, um, it, it, in 2001, I was fortunate enough to be the campaign lawyer for who was then the leading candidate for mayor uh, on the Democratic Mark, side. Mark Green, right? Mark Green. Yep. Yes. And of course, we had the attacks right on primary day. Um, and uh, the Board of Elections couldn't find the governor for a short period of time. And so a Queens judge who was overseeing the election uh, canceled the election yeah, based that's, upon that's actually, based upon his view yeah. that police were, would no longer be able to be stationed at the various polling sites, which right. was a requirement. So he took it upon himself to exercise his plenary powers as a Supreme Court justice and canceled cancel the election in New York City. Okay, so and stop for one sec. Th what's amazing sure. about this is that Mark Green, who actually just wrote a pretty interesting and detailed recollection of, of the events leading up to that election, which he was expected to win at that point, had it not been for the 9-11 attacks. He didn't challenge that judge's decision, which pretty much everybody agrees was the right one, but there was no legal basis for him to make that decision. So technically speaking, Mark Green could have challenged that, right? Well, nobody challenged it because, of course, it was the right thing to do. Uh, this was uh, an attack on the United States. And uh, the, the last thing people were concerned about was making sure that the primary was going on. Right. Uh, Freddie Ferrer believed he was uh, running against a mark. He believed that the early uh, vote was in his favor, and he believed that he was going to win. I irrespective of what the, uh, uh, the judge did, uh, an hour or so later, the governor used his pr uh, pl his plenary powers under uh, under the state uh, constitution, and he canceled all the elections in New York State. Right. He can do that. The governor has the power to temporarily suspend uh, the law, which is what he did. Yeah. You know, and people people might be thinking, well, you know, in the face of such major catastrophe as an earthquake, a flood, an elect, a, a terrorist attack, etc., it's like the last thing you're thinking of. Who cares about the integrity of an election when people's life is at stake, lives are at stake? However, that's, that's, um, when that's we correct. come to a point where we're where we have seen a this country go to war to to enable other people to have the freedom to vote, and b a situation where um, we had the hanging Chad debacle in Florida, it really is a good idea to be prepared, right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I actually first got interested in this issue as a result of the 2001 uh, primary um, because it's, it's important to, to be prepared. Uh, elections have been postponed in different parts of the country because of uh, snowstorms, because of flooding, and so on. And here in, in New York State, just a few weeks ago when we had uh, primary day, uh, the, the very various local boards of elections wanted to cancel the election, or I should say postpone the election, and uh, the state board of election uh, actually refused. Mm. And they, they pointed out that under the law, and they were correct, they pointed out that under the law, uh, local board of elections, or even the state board of elections, has no authority, has no power to postpone a primary or even a general election. Uh, the only the only authority uh, a board of elections has to uh, um, uh, uh, confront that kind of situation is if in a general election only, not in a primary, if in a general election 25 percent of uh, the people don't vote because of a fire or an earthquake or some other kind of act of God is what we call it in the law, right. then they could request 
a postponement, an additional day of voting. But if something is occurring, like we saw several weeks ago, where we have massive flooding and dislocation of people from their homes, closing of polling sites, the loss of electricity and uh, other communication, where the elections really could not proceed in a, in a way that was smooth and that in, uh, allowed everyone to vote, we had no remedy okay. whatsoever. The Board of, uh, okay, the board hold, of Elections... Hold, uh, hold one second, Jerry, because uh, th there sure. are two things I want to get to and I don't want to run out of time. The first thing is that okay. you're suggesting that we we established something called EPREP, Emergency Procedures and Regulations for Election Preparedness, that would set up rules in advance of some sort of calamity. And all members right. of various different political parties would be sitting on this body, and it would be able to make a decision if, in fact, God forbid, we had a situation like this. In consultation with local uh, uh, officials, uh, in, a in a bipartisan way, we should have procedures uh, statewide, uniform, comprehensive procedures that uh, would give us some guidance, at least, so uh, uh, local officials could weigh in and say, look, we have flooding and we've had to close 40% uh, of our polling sites. We have lost the ability to communicate with our uh, poll workers because the computers are down. We've lost our electricity or the, the registration books have been destroyed. If we had some system in place with some uniform rules in advance, not in the middle of an election, but done in a bipartisan way, it wouldn't be uh, fo uh, 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 foolproof, but it would give us good guidance right. as to how to make decisions. Okay, so uh, and part of the problem here, and, and unfortunately we're almost out of time, so very quickly, part of the problem is that New York's election law is pretty difficult to say the least it's a little bit like spaghetti yeah. which is why there are folks like you out there who are experts and there's a case right now that could have some and far I love reaching, spaghetti <laughs> far-reaching implications uh, that mayor Bloomberg case you were in court today I, I just want to get your quick uh, opinion is that going to have the outcome there going to have impacts far beyond New York City and the Bloomberg administration I'm not so sure. Well, it, it, it really depends on what the uh, outcome of the case is. It's right. in the, when it goes to the jury, I don't know how the jury is going to respond to the different narratives that the district attorney has uh, versus uh, the defense team. The mayor was, uh, was very good in court today. He was very straightforward. He was credible. He said he uh, um, uh, wanted to have an election protection program. I have election protection programs all the time for Democratic candidates, for mayor, for governor, for president of the United States. Sure. There's nothing untoward about that. And the real question is whether or not there was a felony here, okay. whether or not uh, the defendant stole money. Uh, okay. from the mayor. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, it, when there's a verdict, I'd like to have you back because I think that there, depending on how this goes, there, there could be potentially some impacts all over the state. Maybe not. If it's very narrow in, in the determination, then, then probably not. But Jerry Goldfeder, unfortunately, we're out of time. I want to thank you very much, as always. We yeah, will be seeing welcome. you soon. Okay.